Hello, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's time for lesson four or five, and we are going to work on some special quadrilaterals today. That's a big word. We're going to talk about what it means in a little bit, but first, our number talk. And today, on your whiteboard, I want you to see what different ways you can come up with an answer for 337 plus 133. Think about what strategies we've used in the past, making tens, using partial sums. Um, so get that whiteboard marker and eraser handy. Pause this video right here, work it out a couple ways, and we'll come back and talk. Okay, now that you've had some time to think about ways to solve this problem, <clears throat> the first thing I thought of was, hey, I can make a 10. So there is 7 and 3. I can take the 7 and the 3 and add those together. 7 plus 3 equals 10. You know what? And then as I'm thinking about this, I'm going to erase that. I'm going to tell you why. Because I can make that 10 and make it look a different way. Um, because like I said, as I was doing it, I thought, Miss Flurry, I can make the 10 like this also. I'm just going to take my problems apart by their place value. And we've done this before. So if I go 300 plus 100, that's going to be 400. And then I'm going to take my tens. That three <coughs> is in three. Those threes are 30. So 30 plus 30 equals 60. And notice how I'm writing my digits ones in the ones place tens in the tens place here's how i'm going to make my 10 i'm going to take my seven and my three i'm going to take my ones my seven and my three add those together and i'm going to get that 10 add those together and i'm going to get 470. so i tell you what i am going to go back to my original thought sometimes mrs flurry's thoughts go all over the place sorry so i'm going to take my seven and three and make that 10. So here I have three tens and another three tens, that's six tens, that's 60. I'm going to add it to the 10 that I made with my seven and three, and that's gonna be 70, okay? And then I know that I have 300 and 100, and that's gonna be 400. Add those together and I'm going to get 470 again. We know that there's lots of different strategies that we can use to add even big numbers in different ways. Okay, so still using your whiteboard and marker, you can go ahead and erase it. Here is a quick problem for you to try. How many sides are there all together in four triangles? How many sides are there all together in four triangles? Well, you know what, gang? We can still do, when in doubt, draw it out. So there's four different sizes of rectangles. How many sides are there all together? Well, I can use a number model, and I have four triangles. And what do I know about triangles? Well, they all have three sides. So here's my visual, here's my number model. I can use the visual to help if I don't know four times three off the top of my head, and I can just count sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So four times three is going to be our number model, and it's going to be twelve sides. Let's try that again. How many sides are there with four pentagons? So you're going to have to think, how many sides does a pentagon have? Go ahead, draw it out if you need to. There's three, four, five. And my number model is going to be four because I have four pentagons. It's going to be times five because a pentagon has five sides. Four times five is 20. So that means that four pentagons have 20 sides. One more, octagons. 
how many sides are there in three octagons? Well, this time I'm not going to draw a picture, but let's think about octagons. How many sides are there on an octagon? There are eight. So, whoop, that is not an octagon or a number, Mrs. Flurry. Sorry about that, gang. I have to get it on my pen. So my number model is going to be three times eight. You feel free to draw octagons on your board if you want to. Totally up to you. But since I know that there are three octagons and an octagon has eight sides, three times eight is 24. So there are going to be 24 sides altogether in three octagons. So at the beginning of our lesson, it said that we're going to work on special quadrilaterals. Now quadrilaterals are polygons and they are polygons that have four sides. The word quad right here, that means four. So quadrilaterals are polygons that have four sides. In your folder for this week, there was a piece of dot paper that looks kind of like this. I want you to find it and get it out and take some time to sketch, connect the dots to make three different quadrilaterals. And then we're going to talk about what makes them different. Pause my video and go. Hello gang, I'm back and I made more than three, but that's okay because you may have made some of the same ones I did and some different ones. Um, so let's talk about what makes these different. They're the same because they have four sides, but what makes them different? Well, this is my square right here. Square has four sides, of course, because it's quadrilateral, but a square sides, all the sides are exactly the same length. That's different than a rectangle because a rectangle has four sides, of course, because it's a quadrilateral, but it has two long sides and two short sides. This shape here, that's a parallelogram. It's kind of slanted. It's quadrilateral because it has four sides. And what do we notice that's different here? Well, number one, it's slanted and it's always drawn slanted. It has two short sides and two long sides. The opposite sides are the same length, just like the rectangle, but it's different from a rectangle because the lines are slanted. This is a kite or diamond shape. It's slanted. The opposite sides are the same length, but it's not a square because it doesn't have the nice straight up and down lines like a square. It's more slanted. But what I want you to notice about a rectangle, a parallelogram, a kite, and a square, what I want you to notice about those are the opposite sides going to clear this out here a little bit. So I'm telling you that the opposite sides of a square are parallel lines. That means they are going to run. If I had extend this line here and I'd extend this line here and here and here and keep it going forever and ever and ever, they're never, ever, ever going to cross each other. That's the same with a rectangle. Both sets of lines are parallel lines. We can continue those lines. They're not going to intersect. The same with this shape here and this shape here. So I called this a parallelogram. This is also a parallelogram and this is a parallelogram. Parallelograms are shapes that their sides are, the opposite sides are parallel and they're never ever going to cross. This shape here, the rhombus, is not a parallelogram. That's how it's different. It only has one set of parallel lines. The other lines, if I would continue these lines, what's going to eventually happen? They're going to cross over. They're going to intersect. And when that happens, 
that shape is not a parallelogram. Here are some other quadrilaterals. Some look standard like squares and rectangles. And some look a little different like this one here. It's still a quadrilateral because it's a polygon. It has closed sides and it has four sides. So it is a quadrilateral. And the shape here, okay, still a quadrilateral because it has four sides. And it's a polygon because it is a closed figure. In your math journal, I want you to turn to page 112. You also have this sheet in your folder. I want you to get it, pause the video, cut them out, turn the video back on when you're ready. We're going to quickly just talk through this page and then you can work on it with someone at home. By number one, I want you to look at some of the quadrilaterals that you cut out, pick two of them, draw one here and draw one here as best you can. Then you're going to tell me what attributes do your quadrilaterals have in common. And what that means is what makes them the same. What's the same about them? And then what's different about those two? Then for number two, you're going to draw two other quadrilaterals, not the same as the ones you did before. And below, you're going to tell what, ha what they have in common, what makes them the same, and what makes them different. So let's talk about these two. What attributes does this square and rhombus have in common? And what's different? Well, what do they have in common? They have four sides. Yep. They each have four vertices, which are the corners. They each have four angles. Okay. And what about these two? What attributes do this square and rectangle have in common? They have four sides. They have four corners. They have four angles. When I look at these two shapes, I can see that the opposite sides are parallel. But what's different? A square's sides are all exactly the same in length. But a rectangle has two short sides and two long sides. And what about this trapezoid and the parallelogram? Now remember that's called a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. What do they have in common? They have four sides. Yep. They have four corners. They have, they both have four angles on the inside. What makes them different? A trapezoid has two sides that are parallel, but the opposite sides are not parallel. If we extend those, they're eventually going to intersect. What attributes do this kite and this parallelogram have in common? Well, they have four sides, four corners, four angles, but what's different, that kite doesn't have any parallel sides. Whereas the parallelogram, both sides are parallel. Opposite sides are parallel to each other. I want you to get out, if you remember you cut out these shapes um, last week, if you still have them, get out shape D. If you don't, that's okay, just follow along with me. How can we check if this shape is a rectangle? Well, we would look for four right angles, and remember, a right angle is when it looks like a capital L, but I see that it doesn't have four. So is it a rectangle? No, because it does not have four right angles. How can we check if it's a trapezoid? Well, since a trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, we can check to see if this is a trapezoid, but if I would continue with these lines, guess what? They are going to eventually cross over each other, so they are not, it is not a trapezoid. Quickly, your assignment for today is to work on Math Journal, page 113. Take a picture, send it to Mrs. Fleury. Thank you.